Okay, let's take another look at conducting some correlation analysis. Now we're going to use practice problem number 23 on page 501 where you're looking at the blood pressure between the right and the left arm. So let's take through the steps of going through and conducting an analysis and an interpretation for this data. So the first step is meeting the criteria. So when we, let's go check and look at how well this meets our particular criteria. So you're going to want to pause the video here, load up that data into your stats crunch, and then you're going to want to plot, you're want to go, going to want to do your scatter plot, and then we want to come back on and check and see how does that look. So does that meet the requirements uh, that we have to have for doing a correlation analysis? So stop the video here, go through and do those steps, and then turn it back on and we'll check it together. The answer is yes, it does meet the criteria. If we take a look at that, oh, we're gonna see it's a relatively linear line, not super awesome, um, but it is suitable. So if we're gonna go through then, let's go ahead and do the strength of the relationship uh, for this potential relationship. So again, you're gonna to wanna to stop the video here, go through, run your correlation analysis following the directions from the video just above where we're doing it with the seals and find out what is your R. So stop the video here, go and check and get your R, and then come back and let's look at the next steps together. Okay, you should have gotten an R of 0.867. So how strong is this potential relationship gonna be? Is this a non-existent, weak, moderate, or strong relationship? If you need to, pause the video and go back and check in your notes for those criteria uh, that we went over earlier for this section. So it's a strong relationship, 0.867, that's a really good one. Um, so if we're looking at that alone, so when we're looking at this, what does this tell us about the direction of the relationship as well? So we've got 0.867, that's strong, and what direction does it go? Well, it's uh, as blood pressure uh, in the right arm increases, so does the pressure in the left arm, because this is a positive relationship. So that means as one value is going up, so does the other. So we have a strong positive relationship between right and left arm blood pressure. However, a very important but commonly made statistical literacy error is to stop here. 0.867, I see this all the time with people are discussing correlation data, um, especially in comments and other um, uh, general social media conversations, is they would say, see this shows this is a really strong relationship uh, between the two, many people even make the mistake of inferring causation between the two, which of course in this case would not be true. The blood pressure in your right arm can't drive the blood pressure in your left arm. You've got the third variable of your heart that pushes the blood pressure in both of them. Okay, So we, we don't have a causation here. We do have a relationship between two uh, being driven biologically by a third variable, our heart. However, even here, this does not prove this is not yet a hypothesis test. This just tells us the potential strength of the relationship. So in order to do this, we've got to do a hypothesis testing. And this is necessary because only in hypothesis testing do we incorporate probability theory. And probability theory, again, is the possibility due to random chance that something has simply happened in there that the results are in fact not due to um, any specific cause, but just our possible random outcomes given the fact that anything can happen once. So in order to do this, let's go through and do our testing here. So we have our critical value. So we have our R obtained of 0.867. We have our P value. If you go look at your stats crunch data, you have 0.057. So pause the video here and go look at the directions um, for practice problem number 23. And you kind of need to go look at the section up above it that's in the bold italic and find the alpha value. And you also need to go and find your R critical value on your uh, correlation, your linear correlation table. So pause the video here and get both of those values and let's come back and check them together. Well, you should have got uh, for your R critical value plus or minus 0.878 and for your alpha a 0.05. So let's apply our interpretation rule to both of these. So looking at our critical value approach, if we sketch that out, does 0.867 fall within the rejection regions outside toward the tails beyond 0.878, or is it actually between those two values? And again, looking at the p-value, is our p-value actually is our p-value less than or equal to our alpha value? 
So pause the video here while you do those interpretations yourself so you can check your work. In both cases, we're gonna to fail to reject the null. So if we're looking at that, keep in mind the, re the null says that there's no relationship between these two, right? So here we can see 0.867 in fact falls not outside the tail, but just inside 0.878. And 0.057 is in fact greater than the alpha value of 0.05, so we're going to fail to reject the null there as well. So here our interpretation would be there's insufficient evidence in the sample to support the method of inferring blood pressure in one arm from blood pressure in another arm. So this is a really important additional step that you need to keep in mind um, when you're reading correlational data, whether it's in your profession or if you're reading about it with regards to social issues or wherever else, is just because you have a strong R relationship, such as this one, 0.867, does not necessarily mean that it will, in fact, dismiss the, uh, uh, reject the null in a hypothesis testing situation. You need to take the additional steps yourself and conduct the hypothesis testing to be able to determine whether or not we actually have good reason to believe there is a relationship here.